Think about something. Listen. Back when I was fighting, 33 and a third was what the manager got. 33 and a third percent. A promoter, 25%. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why in the fuck a promoter would take 25% from a fighter that he has nothing to do with. He's a promoter. You're a promoter. People are going to go off your name and what you've done. Not of how much money you're taking from a fighter. You're taking 25% to market him? He markets his, he markets himself. All right, now let's break the business down now. See, this is why I love educating not just you all. I educate boxers every day. I educate retired boxers as well. And I'm not going to stop now. So let's talk about it. So Michael Moore talked about 33 and a third percent that the manager take and then 25 percent that the promoter takes. Right. That's what that's what he said. OK, let me be clear on something. 30 percent or 33 and a third percent is the um, allowable maximum that a professional boxing manager can receive. Uh, from a boxer, okay? Promoters, they have their own percentages. Could be 20, could be 25, could be 30%, right? I want to add the other side of the coin so that when you hear that, you don't automatically assume that fighters are just getting robbed left and right and it's just so bad for them. We're going to talk business. See, this is not personal. This is business. So let's take it all the way back to a promoter signing a rookie fighter. All right. Let's say rookie fighter, zero wins, zero losses. Promoter signs this rookie professional boxer. Zero wins, zero losses on their record. The promoter. And the manager, let's stay with this and let's talk about the whole picture now. The manager of that fighter, the promoter of that fighter, as this professional fighter is learning on the job and also moving up in the ranking system, right? They are being pushed. It's about the, the, the rookies, the fighters. Zero wins, zero losses. It takes so much capital to be able to move a fighter in this business. Hear me and hear me good. If you forget a lot of things I'm going to say, please remember this one thing. Typically, typically, in total, it takes between five to six years, sometimes 10 years, but I'm just, I'm just being on the generous side if that fighter is that good and developed into a world champion. It takes a minimum of five to six years, really six years, the minimum really for real, for real, for a promoter to at least, hear me now, at least recoup on their initial investment. I'm talking about if the fighter is zero wins, zero losses, moving this fighter up the ranks, regional title first, got to be recognized regionally, and of course it's locally first, regionally, then world championship contention it takes the manager and or the promoter to literally gain a profit after the fighter wins a world title 
So when Michael Moore says that these expenses from the fighter are being incurred and being paid to the manager and the promoter, it's because the manager and the promoter, they're putting up all of the money. We are putting, they, the promoter, we, the managers, we're putting up all of the training expenses. That's not free. Somebody got to pay for that. Boxing gloves, hand wraps, boxing trunks. I'm just talking about training. I'm not even talking about in a live fight that they're, no, just training. Paying sparring partners, setting up paying the sparring partners, all of that. That's the job of management. Advertising, marketing. See, social media wasn't out when Michael Moore was out there. Paying the reporter to put um, a good, favorable story out in the press toward the promoter's fighter. That's not free. Somebody got to pay for that. How about the ring? Now, let's talk about the actual event. The ring. You know if you go to the Barclays Center, right? When you go to the Barclays, the Barclays Center, right? That's the home of the Brooklyn Nets, correct? Okay, so the Brooklyn Nets, they already have their basketball court set up. But if you have a boxing event right there in the Barclays Center, somebody got to get paid to tear that down and break that down. And then somebody else got to come in and get paid to build that ring and install that boxing ring. That's not free. The promoter got to pay for that. All of the gloves that you see. Somebody got, the promoter, somebody got to pay for that. Now, if the fighter chooses their own, that's these, you know, big time main event fighters, they choose their own gloves. But what I'm saying, the, hey, the promoter has to pay for that. That's not free. The medicals, the physicals that these fighters have to take as prerequisites before the fight. That's not free. Somebody got to pay the doctor. What about a surety bond? I, I'm going way too deep. Y'all ain't ready for that. That's out of the scope of my point, but I, I want y'all to understand what I'm talking about. You know there's uh, police presence there for crowd control, for traffic control. The, the promoter has to pay for that. That's not free. What about the EMTs that's in the back of the venue with the stretcher already there? Just, you know, in case... You know, a fighter needs medical attention or they have to be transported in an ambulance. That's not, somebody got paid for that. That's not free. What about the insurance? Promoters have to pay insurance for the event, right? The promoter has to pay sales tax. I don't want to get on and on with it. My point is none of this is free. So if a promoter has to pay these expenses, Every time this one fighter competes over and over and over again, and we're talking about 0 and 0, 1 and 0, 2 and 0, 3 and 0. This, this fighter has to keep winning. What happens when a fighter get 5 and 0 and lose three straight and become five wins and three losses? Then what? What happens to the money that the manager and the promoter invested in this fighter? What happens to the initial investment recoupment? See my point? What happens when the fighter gets 10 and 0? Get in the ring, get knocked out, become 10 and 1, still got two and a half years left on the contract, and never be the same again. Then what? These are expenses. There's way more expenses. I'm just using this as a reference. Okay? So that you can understand is a flip side to the coin. So when someone says like Michael Moore, who's a credible person, say, oh, man, you know, um, man, man, the, the promoter take 25 percent, then the manager who got paid for the airfare. These fighters are not just flying in on their dime. Somebody got paid for that. I already put the contract up two weeks ago when I was proving the point about. Y'all remember that? OK, then. All right. So that's all I'm saying. Put that in perspective. There's, a, there's so many business expenses that me, 
us, the manager, we pay. Listen, I had to change my business model since I got on YouTube. I had to, hey, I, I, had, to, I had to modify my business model. We put out so much money. What about when a fighter asks for loans? Somebody got to pay for that. This is what happens in the business that most people don't know because you might have a fighter say, man, now they robbed me and this and that. But the fighter, you can hear it in Michael Moore. He don't understand the business of boxing. And it's no disrespect to him, but this is why I got in the game in boxing. And this is why I'm here on YouTube to educate you all and, and the fighters. It's so many ex promoters lose a lot of money. You know how hard it is to build a world champion? We talk about Tank Davis. We talk about Terrence Crawford. You know how much the promoters had to, had to invest? You know how much the managers had to invest for us to have the beauty as fans to see these guys and ladies go to world champion contention and then win the title? See, that's the part nobody talks about. So we got, it's two sides to the coin. It's not just, oh man, they just taking a percentage. No, it's, what it is is th this is the only security we have. This is the only security we have. And any of you that understand the concept of business even don't understand that. When you put out money and you invest, you want a return on your investment. And I'm telling you right now, it's hard to build a world champion in the sport of boxing from a manager's perspective and a promoter's perspective. You know how many people are signed to one promoter that we don't hear about? You know why you don't hear about them? Think about that. You know why we don't hear about them? Just think about it. So there has to be a way. Let's say the fighter don't sell many tickets. I'm just using that as the reference. You listen, Bob Arum said it the best. He said, promoting Terrence Crawford fights this is a promoter that said that. The amount of money that he lost, he could have got a, house, a mansion built in Beverly Hills. That's what Bob said. So that's telling me he never recouped on his initial investment and barely made a profit or even broke even. I'm, and, but, but Terrence Crawford, world champion. And, and guess what? The promoter got to pay the matchmaker. This is a business. So it's not like, you know, the whole business concept is set up where um, we're just going to rob the fighters. No, the business concept is set up, but some fighters do get robbed. I'm not saying that they don't. But see, question, where was Michael Moore's representation? If he said all of, this thing, all of these things, and I'm sure they happened to him, where was his representation? Because when the money was coming in, I, I didn't hear um, Michael Moore say this. And I'm not saying he shouldn't have the freedom to express himself. I think he should. But usually when fighters are getting the money, they don't say nothing about none of this stuff. They cool with it. Oh, how much are you getting paid? Two million? What's your cut? 33 and a third? All right, what's your cut? All right, I'm cool with it. They okay with it. And then, they're, and, then, and then when fighters get broke and actors get broke, entertainers get broke, artists, music artists get broke, broke, right? Now everybody start to complain. But it's like, hold on for a minute. All of the business concept existed when you was in it. So I'm just saying, and all managers don't take 33 and a third. I just want to put that out there. Once again, that's the um, allowable maximum amount. You, a manager can take minimum of 10%. Yeah, promoters don't have to take 25 or 30%. But remember, they're putting up a lot of money, not just for the fighter that they're promoting, but even the opponents, the airfare of the opponents and their crew. Of course, the amount is determined in the contract, but my point is all of these expenses, like Frank and Tank, they flew into Vegas today, grand arrivals, right? Right? Okay, then. So from today all the way up until Sunday, they have a per diem that they get paid every day for how much money them and their, their training staff will receive out of the promoter pocket. 
Every day. They got to eat three times a day or once a day or twice a day or however they want to do it. Airfare round trip. Hotel stay. For all of them involved. Opponent. On, and I'm not talking about just the main event. Guys like Tank and Frank. That's all, all the fighters on the undercard too now. This is an entire event. So I, I just wanted to be clear on that. That the manager and the promoter put up a lot of money. Seriously. And most of the time, we do not recoup on our initial investment. Mainly, it takes for a promoter and manager to profit once the fighter becomes a world champion. You know how long that takes? <laughs> you know how long that takes? I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. You know how long that takes? And that's for each fighter. So let's say a manager has five fighters signed to him or her. Promoter have 10 fighters signed to him or her. What happens if none of the 10 or none of the five make it as a world champion? That's the risk we take. Can't, can't even, can't do nothing. Can't even recoup on the initial investment or make a profit. But those are the 10 fighters that were signed under the promotion's banner that you never heard about. You never seen them. Never seen them on TV. But they still locked into a contract because they turned into a losing record, unfortunately. Things happen in boxing. 80% of the time, promoters and managers don't recoup. I'm just, I'm just keeping it 100 with you all. So... When the fighter becomes world champion, that's when the manager and the promoter can sit back and say, Phew, we finally was able to recoup on our investments and have a low profit. That's what happens. Okay? I just wanted to put the other side to the coin. There's nobody else on YouTube that can tell you that but me. And if they are on YouTube, I'm waiting to hear them so they can help me. Because I'm the only one talking about it. But this is a business. They have to recoup on the initial investment. And make a profit. As the promoter. We have to as boxing managers. Recoup on our initial investment. And then make a profit. That's the business concept. Of, of, of any industry. Like me being a real estate investor. It's the same business concept. Music industry, same business concept. You make an investment. How long is it going to take you to get a return on the investment? That's what I love about something. My, my brother broke that thing down to me earlier. I love the way he said that. Time. His barometer is time. And we're going to get to the management part of money. How long? If I invest $10,000 in this pot, how long is it going to take me to receive that $10,000, which is the initial investment, and then make a profit? That, that should be how we think as businessmen and women. You see what I mean? You ain't going to find this nowhere else. That's why I'm glad you're here. Let's move on.